Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. I am Corinne Clements. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for following me right here, right now. This is an all new episode of Radio 911, season one, episode 11. And I do have some breaking news to tell you here on the show. Uh, I'll be uh, pulling from the blog page. So we do have breaking news, breaking news right here, right now. Nomadic Fanatic hospitalized. So if you guys follow me and you guys follow my YouTube channel or you follow YouTube Gaming or you follow Social T, I have talked about Nomadic Fanatic before, previously, and the last episode that I had, well, not this episode, but the last time I talked about Nomadic Fanatic is when I went breaking news, and that was when his cat, Jax, passed away. Now we have some news, breaking news, that concerning Nomadic Fanatic. So on Nomadic Fanatic, uh, I'll just read what's on the, um, the blog page. All right, so, so uh, breaking news, YouTube star, YouTube star Nomadic Fanatic, age 42, is currently hospitalized due to an accident. According to his IGTV post, he fell 12 feet from the roof of his RV and injuries sustained including broken ribs, pinched nerve and inflamed muscles. Remarkably, his big dumb foam hat played a crucial role in protecting his head from more severe harm. Nomadic Fanatic, anticipate a recovery period of six to eight weeks, although it remains unclear whether this refers to healing or the timeline for his next YouTube video. Let's keep him and his cats in our thoughts and prayers during this challenging time. That's on the blog page. All right, so Nomadic Fanatic, the Matter Fanatic is a YouTuber who travels the country. And at that point, it was with his cat, Jax, but Jax passed. And now he has two cats, which is Opie was the boy and Tara the girl. First, he had uh, them traveling. And then now it's like um, they're, you know, they travel through RVs and stuff, different RVs and stuff. So he just got a big. Foot RV, Bigfoot RV. And I remember watching an episode where he was putting solar panels on his, the top of his roof. Now, you guys may have heard me say big dumb foam hat. Well, there was the last episode that Eric had where he was going to the NASCAR racing events and he made it to the news where he had his big hat on representing his teammate and that teammate happens to be a race car driver so from what i've known and from what i've seen and from what i read according to what i've seen uh he had footage of him being on top of his 12 i mean his, on top of his bigfoot where he's there but i have also seen nomadic fanatic on top of his previous rvs and you know, those RVs didn't have as much stuff as you would see on top of this new RV. Now, this new RV has probably eight to nine panels up there. We're talking about solar panels. And it's a lot of solar panels up there. He has solar panels on his Bigfoot, and he has solar panels on his trailer, like the trailer that he's trailing. So, I don't know if the fact is, is that he had too many solar panels up there and he had enough room to, to move around and there was no safety net around, no safety bar. Uh, when I seen his footage before, when he was at the Nassau race tracks, uh, he definitely, definitely, you, he had the camera down, you know, you can, he's stepping through the crevice and trying to make his way through. And I was even saying to myself, that looks unsafe, you know, just being up there look unsafe, you know, you can absolutely trip and 
fall somewhere. I've seen his previous RVs where he'd had like chairs up there. He's been to this event before where the NASCARs go and, you know, he, he's, he's, he goes up there and he, he's like, ooh, you know, being, being uh, energetic and everything. But this time I was saying, when I seen his last videos, um, I was like, well, him and then his, his, the girl that he's traveling with, she was up there too. So I was like, wow. But according to uh, this, he fell 12 feet from the roof of his RV. He literally fell. And I'm not really sure how he fell, but according to what he wrote on his IGTV, uh, he said that he suffered broken, a broken rib, it, a pinched nerve, and inflamed muscles. So I'm not really sure how he fell, but I can tell you that his big, dumb foam hat that he had saved him. It saved his head from crushing on the ground. And according to him and what we're reading, that may have been like a helmet for him. You know, because imagine, picture it, someone falling 12 feet from an RV on the ground and you walk away with a pinch, nerve, muscles, spasms, and problems, and also a broken rib. And he said that he took his first ambulance ride and it wasn't pretty much good, okay? Last but not least, when he says six to eight weeks, uh, I do know that I follow Nomadic Fanatic and I wasn't gonna follow him because Jax died, but then when he got open and terror, I was like, okay. And then when he was doing more boondocking on the road, that's what made me continue to follow. Because sometimes when people do what they do and then they get enough followers or whatever, they just tend to not post or take three to four days to post. And then when they do post, the video is like 15 minutes. But then I understand the whole part of editing. You may take so many events and condense it down like an hour and push it down, push it down to like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. You know, the whole rules change it on YouTube and everything for the content creators who are making money. So I understand. So six to eight weeks, I'm not really sure what that means, but again, is it six to eight weeks of healing or six to eight weeks of a Video. Now, I would think that if you are a YouTube content creator and you have gone through this, I would think that you are recording the process. You know, hey, I'm in a hospital. You know, this is a video, putting that there. Uh, I have a rib fracture. You know, just showing your viewers what's good. You know, uh, because we did just see a photo of Eric, Nomadic Fanatic, in a hospital with like these tubes in his arms and everything. And that's pretty much it, you know? Uh, so usually when you have like a cracked rib or whatever, he had a shirt on and everything and his pants on. But uh, usually when you have like a cracked rib, they don't usually have a shirt on. They usually have like a shirt off and something wrapped around your ribs or whatever. And, you know, usually like cracked rib or if you have a puncture lung or something, they usually have like this thing. You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm, sometimes people can do and say things well, sometimes I'm not saying nomadic fanatic. I'm just saying people could usually uh, exaggerate the situation, you know, because they have a lot of followers and they want their followers. Sometimes they follow us to be very dramatic and, you know, they get to donating and doing all that other stuff. So um, six to eight weeks, again, for the recovery or for video. All right, so if we look at the six to eight weeks, this just happened, so we probably won't be looking at a video until May. Okay, we in March, or we probably look at something like around April, May. All right, and last but not least, I said that before, I'll say it again, uh, keep the prayers up for Nomadic Fanatic, and also keep the prayers up for his cats. I'm not really sure who's watching his cats, probably his, his girlfriend is watching the cats, but Tara Opie, 
definitely, definitely are the reason why I watch the Magic Fanatic because every time I see them, I give a thumbs up. And then when I don't see them, I don't give a thumbs up to the video because I'm not there for, I'm there for like boom the boondocking and the whole experience of RV living and traveling and stuff. But it's just like, it's just been really, like his videos, for to me, this is just my opinion, has been like really down and it just like really been really short. So, but he, this is the breaking news that Nomadic Fanatic, YouTube star Nomadic Fanatic is hospitalized and he's in the hospital because he fell from his the roof of his Bigfoot RV. I don't know the location. I don't know uh, where it happened at. But I do know that according to his IGTV, you guys can go up there, it's Nomadic Fanatic TV on IGTV, and you guys can get your life and you can follow him. And also you can follow him on YouTube, just go to Nomadic Fanatic, and you can see him, current latest videos and his past previous videos. All right? So, moving right along. All right, so watch, wishes to Terror and Obi. All right, so uh, I do have a couple of updates that I do want to give right here on Radio 911. Shout out to everybody who is watching. Shout out those who are here. Shout out those who are on their way. Now, I've had a lot of things come through my email, which I would say come through my desk. And I do know that some stuff that I was waiting to talk about, you know, doing Kareem in the morning or uh, Radio 911 here or just going on social T. I do know we're in 2024 and I have a couple of updates that I do want to give to you guys. Now, number one, one email that came across my desk uh, where they wanted me to talk about the story on the Tyree Nichols case and where we're at when it comes to the officers that was charged and where we come, where we're at right now, more than a year later after his death what's happening okay are these officers at trial are these officers convicted are they sentenced are there legislations uh out in arna for tyree nichols and how the, we can prevent this from happening to someone else legislations and laws happening in that state okay so I did not forget about that, but I could tell you that I have been seeing some videos where the officers are in trial right now. Some of the officers are in trial. I think some of them have copped the plea deal. I do know that there was like a little bit of discrepancy problem when it comes to legislation and laws and stuff. But I do know that that update that I just told you about where the officers are on trial, they have started the trial figure. Now, I probably said this before, and if I haven't, I'm going to say it now. I know it's very disturbing when those videos have hit the airway when they first produced them. I want to say that I've only seen one or two videos. Other videos I haven't seen. I told myself that I'm not going to look at it because I don't want to look at it now. That was like a year ago, January. We're here now, a whole year later, in January to pass, February to pass. I said to myself in Black History that I wanted to look at that video because I believe that I'm ready for it. And then when I just typed in the name, when I typed in his name, Tyree, and then I looked at it, the video, something just, like, I started tearing up all over again. So I know I'm not ready for that video. Not yet. Uh, it would be two videos that I haven't seen. I think it's four altogether, but two of them I haven't seen. So Tyree Nichols' update will be uh, soon. As I get more information, I will get you guys update on that. Next. I do know that people was asking me to give my opinion on the P. Diddy experience. Now, all I can tell you about that is, is that when R. Kelly, well, first of all, let me just rewind. I was, because, you know, I'm a YouTube gamer, and I play a lot of 
you I do a lot of role play with you two game on stream workshop. When I was doing this way back and I had a recording as I was playing uh Project High Rise, and the message usually pop up on the screen and it says ding doo -doo -doo, and it chimes and in and, and the screen it I'm like, okay, what now? And it's in recording too. It's archived too. I I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a video and I'm going to like show you guys. And right when it said, uh, no, it chimed, it chimed, and then I was like, it, no, it chimed, and then they read. It said, "R. Kelly being investigated," and I think it was like within a second I was like, "What the hell?" And from there. To now, I realize that this man <laughs> has been tried and been convicted and is in jail for a long time. So when I was playing a game, <laughs> trust me, when I was playing a game, uh, the message had popped up on the screen about P. Diddy, Puff Daddy. And I was like, oh, God. So that was edged in stone the same way it was edged in stone when that message popped up in R. Kelly and that stuff happened. The same thing with P. Diddy. So if I fast forward my life from here to now in the future, just like how if I did when that message happened and I fast forward uh, it was like three, four years later, three, four years later, um what 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 happened? So all I can say is if there's receipts and evidence proven, Judge Boyd out of the 187, Stephanie Boyd out of the 187 in Barrett County, Texas, okay, if the state proves with the evidence beyond reasonable doubt that there is receipts proven the charges that they have against this man and they are serious and they're heavy and that there is no way around it then you're guilty if there is no significant evidence proven beyond reasonable doubt that the charges that this person is being brought up against, and there's no weight of evidence proven, then it's a not guilty. So that's what I say about that. There's not enough evidence for me because I do know that the internet will take something and make it like it was born yesterday when that shit has been here for years. Okay. So I gotta wait. I gotta wait to see. Um the difference between him and R. Kelly, R. Kelly talked. I did not hear not one word from P. Diddy. I didn't hear nothing come out of his mouth. Every time I hear a statement, it's always, uh, we're gonna, the lawyers, we're gonna come back to this. I've, when I hear it out of his mouth, when I hear it, when I he when he sits down and speak with someone like Robert Kelly did with Gail, um, and P. Diddy sits down with someone, then I would start to really look into it. But what the, what's happening now is that because his girlfriend filed the lawsuit or his ex-girlfriend filed a lawsuit and she won or he paid off, then Bombshell is saying everything that she talked about has took off. And now all these other people, this is what I'm seeing, this is my opinion. All these other people now is now coming forward and now giving their story about what happened, you know, or what could have happened, allegedly happened. Okay, so that's what I'm going to say about uh, P. Diddy, all right? And last but not least, okay, because I know this video's on. All right, it's 20 minutes. All right, so last but not least, uh, people wanted me to talk about the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Now, all I could have said, and, and I can tell, I'm going to read what I posted on the blog page. All I can say is that I do know that they wanted to they revamp uh, revamp a lot of, of the girls. Some left, some they just got rid of, 
and some just didn't really like to pay or whatever. What I was hoping, I was hoping that my girl T.S. Madison was going to be part of the Real Housewife of Atlanta. That's what I really wanted. And I really hope. Why you say that, Kareem? Because I think at some point, and we at the time of our life, because we came from there then to now when we had just LGBT. That's it. Now we have almost every definition in the alphabets in there. Okay. Plus we have pronouns and then we have some more. The culture of what we've seen in that's on our television has changed dramatically, okay? And I do know that Bravo is nationally, okay, and internationally, okay? I don't know. I, be, I believe they're internationally, domestic, internationally. So things, you know, during the pandemic, you know, we had a lot of revamp, a lot of things change and everything, and then we come back. So I basically wanted to see, I wanted to see, like, new change. And when they said when they knew when they said that it was going to be a whole different thing, I was really hoping that Diaz Madison would be on the show because that would show like not only the fact that they doesn't look look at women who don't have husbands because majority of them they didn't really have husbands, you know, housewives get it, housewives, you know, this show. Uh, just be one of these rent, whatever. Okay, so um, just to have a different culture, and then to have T. S. Madison, transgender, on the show, show in her world, and what she gives, and what she brings, and how she can teach not just the ladies one or two things, but teach the community as a whole. And just open up the door for other people. Okay? I'm just saying. Sometimes people don't want to see it. Sometimes the rating go down. I mean, it's all about revamping, re changing the show, and doing it so get the followers. Because when it first popped off in the beginning, I was one of them. Okay? And I'm going to read this, and I'm going to go ahead and end it. All right. So at some point... Um, Sad news about Kim Zodiac and what's next for the Real Housewife of Atlanta. So they were saying that they wanted Phasia to come back. They wanted um, Kim to come back. They wanted, uh, who else? Nene to come back. I, that's my favorite housewife. I'm always here for Nene. Okay, I say her name, I say her saying all the time. And if y'all catch me on the videos, y'all hear my saying, her, my saying, her saying all the time, I have arrived, honey, and the spotlight is on me. So Nene, yes, she's the original. Okay, Kim is the original. Candy, the original. Sheree, the original. And then we have some more. So, breaking news. From social media world, it is appearing that Kim Zodiac will not be gracing our screens in the upcoming season of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. So some people thought that Kim Zodiac was coming back. So Sim, Sim, Sim. Kim Zodiac had to clear up her name and go back to the social media and explain to them. If you recall, Kim was once part of the Housewives crew and even held the peach. On the brighter side, Portia Williams is set to make her return. Congratulations to Portia Williams. Um, I do know that Portia mysteriously got divorced. That's what social media is saying. Okay, that's what social media is saying. And I'm gagging because, uh, first of all, I thought it was, I, would, I was hoping that, it, you know, someone who just wrote a book, did a book release tour, then, um, got married and changed her whole life around. And then now you're hearing stories that there's divorce going on. And then she's going back to the show. And then some people say it, that it's a storyline. It's not true. Some people say it, it is. And then I don't know. But that's what it is. OK, so but it says, but unfortunately, we have some bad news. Uh, Candy Burris and Sonia Richards Ross, if I'm saying that right, 
will be bidding farewell to the show. Real Housewives of Atlanta has been a staple since the intercept in 2008. First woman residing in or around Atlanta, Georgia, with 15 seasons under its belt, and the show has seen stars like Nene Leakes, Deshaun Snow, Sheree Winfield, Winfield, Cynthia Bailey. Shout out to Cynthia Bailey, and shout out to Papa Smurf. I really, really hope that he is not. I, I really hope those headlines is not true. Okay, about him owing all that money because of a, of a deal that have gone down or whatever. But, um, you know, shout out to him, okay? Claudia Jordan, okay? I, I first seen Claudia when she was on Deal or No Deal, okay? But shout out to um, her. And she's still doing her thing on Fox So Yeah, she's still doing her thing on there. Shout out to Phasia Parks and Lisa Wu. Place an episode of whopping 320 and counting. And let's not forget the birth of Real House of Atlanta spinoffs, including titles like I Dream of Nini, even though it wasn't in that order, The Wedding, Don't Be Tardy, The Candy Factory, Porsche Having a Baby, Candy and the Game, Escape Still Kicking It, and more. Okay? Kim Zodiac wanted to set the record straight and not leave the fans hanging any longer. So she bit this statement. She boldly stated that the truth is that I'm not returning to the Brown House of Atlanta, but I thought enjoying my time holding the peach and she loved it. Stay tuned for the drama, glamour, and fabulous moments in the Real Housewives of Atlanta episodes. Okay. So yes, uh you guys can go on the blog page. That is my stories right here, right now on Radio 911. Shout out to Al Nicholson. Shout out to Carlson Boy. Shout out to Princess Diamond. Shout out to Jabba Law. Shout out to Nay Love. Okay. Shout out to those on uh, Omega Studio News Talk Show T and also What I See, You See. And also shout out to Rodney Chester, man. Shout out to Rodney Chester. If you guys don't know who he is, uh, Rodney Chester plays Alex and Noah's Ark, go to his website. It is rodneychester.com and tell the people that you are a fan, okay? You are a fan and give all the scoops on those things. Like, what's the tea, Gert? Okay? So I'm Kareem Clemens and this is Radio 911 and I'll see you guys very soon. For more information, you guys can visit the blog page. Peace.